on it though with no coolant in it. Oh, you got. That's scared. okay. You just warm it up. A little. Welcome back to the garage. My name is John. Thank you for joining us. We are back at it again today. Trav is hard at it. He beat me in here. Mm -hmm. Putting interior, still more, more interior. Together, yep. And I'm going to get started on tying uh, some of the wiring from the chassis into the engine harness. So mainly like the starter stuff and all the relays that I can, can tie into. See if we can get that sorted out. I was going to grab... Uh, a fuel pump and stuff today for this car but i didn't get a chance so we're not doing that today little kill in the interior he's got the tranny stuff pushed through and everything like that so he's just about into the center console but he has the cd player in let's see if it actually will light up brody has the battery connected up there oh oh she's lit what cd is in there That is Quasimodo. Okay. Quasimodo. Oh boy. Yeah. Wow, this fast. Pulling wires out of the dash. Brody was nice enough to find us a pin out of the car so we know what connectors do what and all that stuff because he has access to all that. Because he's a mechanic, in case you didn't know. German. <laughs> Call him Dr. Brody. Wiring specialist. Anyway. I'd say special. He's a special. Special, special already. <laughs> <laughs> so he found out what does what for the Corolla. So we have pulled that out of the harness and out of the fuse box and whatnot. And we are got those wires that we're running to the, our ECU to pick up for our sensors and uh, key on, main power, like engine light, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're doing we're right now. On. So the, the Your own camera, by the way. <laughs> No, you can't swear. Richie welding up a trans mount. Realistically, tech making something temporary to build off. Of. Cause this ain't this ain't gonna hold down 200 horsepower. It ain't. No, buddy. No way. Man, 170 torque. All right, so we're here. We got stuff done. Got a bunch of stuff wired underneath the dash, temporarily wired, just with the butt connectors and other stuff that you shouldn't wire your car with. Um, ECU, Trav has it mounted. You can kind of see it just tucked up in front of Richard's face there, in there. It's mint. Rich is fiddling with his ancient stereo. And also he temporarily finished the transmission mount. So that's holding the transmission up good. Show us your shifter there, big guy. Ta-da! A little Dragon Ball Z. Fancy. Anyway, we should have it so that he can just push the clutch in and spin it over with the key. Oh, the key works. Oh, that's exciting. That is exciting. All right, now. Okay, yeah, now we got to give her some chance. Yeah. You're going to give her some chance. No, Brody, you're the, you're the professional. What the heck? What did what we do? Heck is right? Well, let's see if we have spark now for sure. I must ask you something. What's that? <clears throat> is it factory or is it? <laughs> no, it's uh, aftermarket. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Round 87. I don't even think I need to give it some more brake cooling. Oh. Well, we can check and see if we have spark, I guess. Yeah, I'm not going to give it any brake clean then. <laughs> Crank it over, please. Buddy. She's running on three, but she's got spark now. <laughs> okay, well, let's get her Kinda running. Kind of made me jump a little bit. I didn't expect that. Let's get her running on four, though. It's alive. Hello again, Brody. He was kind enough to bring us a fuel pump from work. He works at a dealership. That's out of a two liter EcoBoost? Yeah, uh, 13. Two liter EcoBoost, I believe it's from. So that was a takeout. It was garbage because it was making lower fuel pressure than it needed. So we're going to try it and we're just rigging it up. Ice cream pail, safety first. He's making some 
safe connectors to connect it up so we're not just jumping it to a battery trying to get the pump to work <laughs> he's a better man than me yeah i want to i want to live for a bit still yeah also he has a beard and i do not so there's that whole factor like you don't want it to flame up in your face and burn off your beautiful beard whereas i just don't have that much to they light up very quickly <laughs> so yeah we're rigging this up and we'll uh give her a little test here well, that's the first thing you should say is always use fuses, kids. <laughs> Do you want to repeat that? <laughs> always use fuses, kids. Safety first. Yes, thank you. He's got it rigged up. Booster cables down out of the way. We don't actually have fuel in there yet. I'm going to point out a fact for the masses. The reason we're doing it this way is because I want to keep the spark from connecting the battery as far away from the fuel source as possible. Gas is flammable. Just in case you don't believe it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hang on to it. This motherfucker so it doesn't go screwy when that motor starts up. Alright. You should just be able to touch and at least hear the motor go. Oh, I heard. That sounds like it. I heard pumpage. Alright, now we'll add some fuel. Try it again. Ready? Yeah. Yep, we got fuel. Oh, yeah, she's pumping good. Look, I can't even pull it back. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And she's empty. She went through that pretty quick. Did it suck it out of the bottom or the. The yes. whole thing. It's all empty. Mint. We're all disconnected. Yeah. Figured out a little bit more wiring tonight. We found their uh, fuel pump relay, which is down there, which doubles, I guess, it's called an open circuit relay, and it turns on, or it's triggered by a couple things. Anyway, we pulled the power out of that. That goes to the pump. And the little jumper harness that I made that has the relay built into it for the fuel pump, and it's triggered by the ECU and powered by the main relay runs the way across it's the whole thing i'm out of breath anyway there's that brody is in the back we uh trace the fuel pump wires to the back and he's in the back with the test light and yeah we're gonna see it should be able to turn on the key and it should just fl like flip the pump on prime and then shut off and then it should come back on when we're cranking you ready back there Brody? oh yeah all right key on okay we're on nice off with the prime and then going to crank Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, buddy. Beautiful. Sweet. One more time. Yeah. Okay. And off. Yeah. Mint. Oh yes. So now we can just we could in theory, if you really want to try, we could just do our jerry can experiment again and I'm gonna run the hose right back into the Yeah. Might as well. I'm just gonna go like this so I can we can watch the fuel coming out. <clears throat> And just so you know, drive fire extinguishers over there by the transmission. Just I've seen case. that. <laughs> Looks like you guys were getting serious. Well, just in case. I don't mess around with fuel. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we're ready. All right. Key on. Ooh. I heard a prime. Mm-hmm. And then straight to crank. There we go. See, she's dumping. Do we have a winner? Look at that. Oh, yeah, buddy. And Jarve's got it all on video for you to experience. She's mint. That works perfect. There's so the fuel tank just used the Chapman's. <laughs> That's what we were saying. We were saying earlier, like, to get it to move around, this would work. Well, just uh, cut a hole in the lid about this size. And then there you we'll go. just leave her like that so it splashes around. Oh, yeah. I ain't paying for the gas. <laughs> we are back for another night of work on the Corolla. Travis working on the, uh, what are you working on, bud? Headlight harnesses, trying to tuck it. Don't see it in the oh yeah, keep it nice and low. Yes, sir. Mint. I made up a long uh, kind of harness, I guess. That would be a harness. I think five or six wires in there. And uh, I'm going to use that to replace the temporary ones that we have running from the jumper harness to the panel, the fuse panel. So, yeah, because we just have some loose wires kind of strung through there just for testing. So I'm going to chop all those out. And then put mine in, crimp it all up good. Hopefully then that part is done. Well, we got the this side of the harness tucked. It used to come out of this hole. It used to come for the headlights. So decided to clean it up. Tie it up, put all the wires there, run a couple that we needed back through. This one's for the side marker, or signal light, I guess. We would tie 
this or we would try to hide this wiring but then we're going to put the battery yeah, there and then go then you just have one common power the intake going to run something like that so really no sense it'll hide it anyways other than that the wiring is coming along pretty well almost done we got john and broadster in there hard at, hard at it wiring hard at it Lightly, lightly exert. Yeah, I think that's part of this branch. It looks like a lot of this stuff is branched in the cluster, so. Oh, it's because it's check engine, right? So if anything freaks out, then it's. Yeah. Okay. What you doing now, bud? Buds? Uh, what am I doing, Brody? Uh, grab the. Do you have the test light? Yeah. The test light would add a load. We might just get a dim light over here, but it would add a load, so even though we don't have a fuse, it would prevent us from shorting something. Bro, right? we got a garage full of dim lights here. What we were going yeah. to show you, Travis, is their little engine light that we proved out before. So now, when you turn the key on, we have an engine light. It does not go out because there's no two sensors connected. There's it's probably angry. So Rich yeah. is always going to have an engine light. So in true Honda fashion, <laughs> we made it so the check engine light is always on. <laughs> Just for, just for Rich. Now you just need to make sure it has a, a ticking noise oh, while it's idling. it's idle. blinking. It's very angry. Oh, we got a misfire. Oh, buddy. We got a misfire. Oh, okay. Scrap the whole project. Oh, she's good to go now. What you got going on there, bud? Well, I'm just going to make a... We're making a custom harness here. We're going to... This is going to be for the DLC. Actually, I think it got sitting over there somewhere. What does yeah. that mean for non-mechanics, bro? Oh, yeah. Sorry. This is... This is the OBD2 connector port. So what we're going to do is set this thing up so that it can actually talk to a scan tool similar to one of these that people might have in their garage to check what codes are set when they get a check engine light. So now the Corolla in 88 would not have been OBD2. This wouldn't have been a thing until 98, 96. And we'll have this guy sitting somewhere nicely. We can screw it right to the dashboard and make it real nice for scanning checking codes. Brody's in here, wiring up like crazy, doing the OBD2 things, connecting it to the ECU side. Got a battery hooked up. We're just gonna watch him intently. You got anything over there? Nope, it is not picking it up. Our ground should be fine. We got pin 6 and 14. 16, sorry, and 4 and 5. I have my chassis ground, I have my sensor ground. All right, we're gonna let Brody figure this out, and then we'll revisit this when there's more exciting things, like stuff working. We'll just yep. make it look like we got it first try. All right, Brody, what did you find? Give me the short and hairy of it. All right, well, what did I find when I uh, fudged up? Um, well, on your DLC, you got two grounds. You need a signal ground and a chassis ground. My chassis ground was uh, just flailing here limp while oh. everything was wired up. So we need a chassis ground. So now that we got our chassis ground, keys on, we'll take our scan tool, we plug it in. Ooh, we got a check engine when we plugged it in. That's good. It's probably a good thing, but... Nothing short. Oh, things are beeping. Yeah, and so now it's just wanting us. It I, it must not be able to pick up the make, so there's probably something else we got to do with that. What are the permanent DTCs? I don't know if that one will show them. This one's pretty. It's a pretty basic scanner. I could have brought my Bluetooth one. That would have been a little more high end, but. Had a permanent IAC. <laughs> Leading you, maybe. Yeah, you should just be able to click that and it'll give you option on the buttons. No? no. Interesting. Sounds like when you use an ATM. Yeah, it does. What's your pin, Brody? Huh? Don't <laughs> never, worry. Never mind. Yo, where's your cheat? You put the cheat codes in? Is it a grand theft auto? So, the boys, uh, we're working in here, trying to get some stuff figured out. They got the intake off and everything unplugged and all that. And we just took it off because we have a, a small list of things that we need to get accomplished in here. Um, we have this heater line, which is a steel pipe that runs through there. Nope, the wrong one. Pulled it out already. Not bad. <laughs> it runs down in the darkness. Right there. It runs up and it runs around the back. Got to modify that somehow or cap it or something so that... Because uh, he doesn't have any heater core in this car. We have to 
mount the distribution block for the brakes. We also have to make a brake line to run through and around to the, the driver's side caliper. Kind of looks like a, a finagle of wires right here, but it's actually not too bad. I have to figure out a place to mount this fuel line. Yeah, maybe some radiator hoses while we're whilst we're in and around here. We started mocking some stuff up out of old scrap. So, yeah. We're not tucking the wires. The wires are just going to be sitting like that forever. Once this thing runs and dries, Rich, it's all on you. Brake line. Oh, oh. Wow. I mocked it up first with welding wire so we could see where it went and Give me your bent it all up. I don't have any. Let's see if it plums in. What kind of bird poop is this? Okay. You okay over there, old man? Oh, yeah. Just getting older by the minute. I spent the morning at the junkyard in the rain, and now it's beautiful outside. So I spend the afternoon in the garage. Ah, oh, boys are on their way over. This thing, well, it feels like we're going backwards. We're not, we're going forwards, but there's some stuff that uh, needs to be redone. The oil pan is leaking everywhere. That, uh, I didn't realize Rich had taken that off. Anyway, it needs to be Honda bonded back on. So we gotta pick the engine up a little bit to do that. And we had to take all the intake off and everything uh, to run rad hoses which I got some from the junkyard, hopefully they work. And also Rich ordered a plug for the heater core feed line. So not sure when that's gonna be here, but hopefully it's soon. So we can get this thing filled up with coolant and I guess run it for longer than a little bit. Um, we, if we can get this stuff, the intake back on today, we could probably start it. I did get, well, here's your pump. I got a, a quick connect fitting. And if that'll work, Brody might have some line that he's going to bring. So we just need to get some plastic line for that. And then we can connect that onto the factory steel line. Should be good. Uh, also, we need to put a fuel filter in there somewhere. These are the parts that... All this little stuff that just takes forever. It's like, you have to go and pick up this and that and this. And sure, you can order it all online. But chances are, you're going to order the wrong stuff. If you're me, anyway, I always end up ordering the wrong stuff, and then it's way more of a schmozzle than, than it would have been in the first place. So, yeah, all the stupid little things take way too long, cost way too much. Even my trip to, trip to the wrecker this morning cost me 70 bucks for a couple rat hoses. I'm fuming a little bit. I'm unhappy. All right, so we made some progress. They, we got two of them in there. They're fed and happy and giggling. Whatever, you guys are just mad because we're beautiful. I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> He's a handsome man. Anyway, the pan is resealed, torqued up uh, totally to spec. You just go till they're tight and then they loosen off and then that's where you leave them, right? Okay, that's what I did. And you got somewhat of a fuel line hooked up, super janky, but I guess we just want to know if it works. So we got a little bit of fuel in our hey. makeshift tank that's sitting on our real fuel <laughs> tank that's not quite done. Hey, don't key on yet. Not yet. Okay, do it right now. Just know, we're going to check for anything sparky sparky back there. Make sure there's no magic smoke getting out. Sparky or key. Anyone else smell popcorn? Okay, well, I'm not going to stand in the way just to film this, but... All right, Rich, key on, please. Go on. I hear no fuel pump. No, nothing is on. Interesting. Do you have lights on on the dash? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, take two. You can watch my line where it joins right there. That would be fantastic. First things first, before you start it, you're going to turn the key and we're going to prime the pump. We're going to see if we got any leaks at that back fit. Just to make sure because we don't want things to go up in front. Turn it off and do it like two more times. Sounds mushy. There we go. Okay, I don't see anything leaking through back there. Up the Another once more, Rich. It's sucking fuel now. Yeah, nothing up here. Oof, she's got some pressure. <laughs> it wanted to. Well, is this gonna be the first start? It wanted to. <laughs> Hold up! Don't kill the battery. 
<laughs> Maybe we don't need it. Those injectors are probably full of schmoo. Yeah, so. that's probably true. That's pretty good with yeah. missing half of its sensors. And realistically, yeah, like it's missing quite a bit. This right yeah. here should be vacuumed into the intake, so that's fine because you're going to build crankcase pressure no matter how you cut it. And that's the whole reason for the PC. That fuel leak at the back is it returning, like through the at the pump? Oh, it's okay. spraying out of the pump and that, misting that everywhere. Thing is that's exciting. Ten years, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be fast as fuck now. <laughs> It'll be a lot faster, I bet. I like how the coolant, tur coolant pass has turned into an extra exhaust. Yeah, it's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that was what was smoking was uh, just coolant. coolant. Jacket. Yeah. Well, it's just getting warm, right? Yeah. There's nothing in there, so it's going to expel something. Hot air is going to be... Starts well, just needs like dry just, shaft. Oh, yeah, good everything thing it didn't fall off the jack while you're having the piss out of her. Yeah, it's fine. Rich, all, <laughs> I, it's fine. all you got to do is just make the fuel setup permanent and then you're fine. Because right now it's very temporary. I would not recommend rolling down the street with a Chapman's ice bucket. In it. Oh, you got That's scared. okay. You just warm you it up a little bit. He's off. Yeah. All right. You're cut off. Yeah. You, no more for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you look back on this and be like, "Oh, that's why I blew that head gasket." <laughs> it's warm. It's not. <laughs>